All right, let's go take a look at DynamoDB, uh, which is AWS's NoSQL database. So we'll go over to DynamoDB. And what we'll do is create ourselves a new table. And we'll just say my DynamoDB table. And you always have to choose a partition key. You don't necessarily have to have a sort key, but it could be something like, um, like it, you want it to be really unique. So it could be like email, and this one could be uh, created at, right? And so we have string, binary. Notice that the, the uh, types are very sim simple. Then for settings, we have default settings or customized settings. So the default is use provision capacity mode, rewrite five rules, et cetera, custom. No secondary indexes, use KMS. So I'm gonna just expand that to see what I'm looking at. We have two options here on demand. Uh, so simplify billing by paying the actual reads and writes that you use or provisioned, which is this is where you get a guarantee of performance. So if you wanna be able to do, you know, whatever it is, a thousand, I don't know what it goes up to, but like a thousand read writes per second, then that's what you're paying for, okay? You're paying for being able, having a guarantee of that um, of that capacity, okay? I'm not gonna create any secondary indexes, but that's just like another way to uh, look at data. Notice down below that we have a cost of $2.91. Uh, then we have encryption at rest, so you can do owned by Amazon DynamoDB. That's pretty much the same as like you know, AWS has, or S3 has SSC S3 there. You could use, uh, CMK. actually, I guess both of these are probably KMS, I would imagine. We'll go ahead and create the table here. And that's gonna create the table. This is usually really, really fast. We'll go here. And what we can do is insert some data. So as it's just starting up here, we can go over to our tables. They recently changed this UI, so that's why I look a bit confused. Uh, view items up here. Okay, and then from here, we can create an item. So I can add something, say, so andrew at exampro.co and 2021, uh, well, we'll just do the future. So let's say 2025, 0505. I don't wanna have to think too hard here, but we can add additional information. So I can say like uh, today, true. We could say, um, make it like a list, uh, you know, food. And then I can go here and then add a string. It is not working. Oh, there we go. There we are. So we could say like um, banana and then we could say pizza, right? We can go ahead and create that item. And so now that item is in our database. Uh, we can do a scan that will return all items. We can query where we can actually have uh, some limitations of what we're choosing. There's the party queue editor. So we can use SQL to select it. Um, I have not used this before. Party queue, um, AWS or party queue, DynamoDB samples. I'm hoping I can just find like an example of some of the language getting started here. I don't need to. I don't need a, an explanation. Just show me an example. <laughs> Query here, and I will. I'll get to it here. Okay, so here's some examples, right? So maybe we can give this a go. Um, so we have our table here. So my Dynamo DB table, and I just want the email back. We don't need a where. We'll run this. See if it works. There we go. I'm not sure if we could select additional data there. So I know that we had some other things like uh, food. There it is, okay. So that's really nice um, addition to it. DynamoDB can stream things into a DynamoDB stream to go to Kinesis and do a lot of fun things. So there's all sorts of things you can do with DynamoDB, but um, I'm pretty much done with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this table. And notice that it also created some CloudWatch alarms, so we want to delete those as well. Create a backup, no, we do not care. Go ahead and delete that. And that is DynamoDB.